afternoon all, it's Wednesday the 30th of August 2017. Welcome to this afternoon's United Kingdom talk. Look, I've had this jacket, I must show you, I've just, I've had this jacket, I took it in because this bit, they haven't done a bad job of it, but that bit there, okay, I've had a problem with it keep folding in. Now, it's still doing it a little bit, but it's not as bad as it was. You know, it, it kept folding because it's linen. And this is a blooming nightmare. This this jacket is actually a nightmare. You, you you put it down for like three seconds, not on a hanger. You pick it up and there's a crease for life. Oh, there are not. Has anyone got any linen? Um, where are you? Come back over it, over it, over it. There we are. Has anyone got any linen jackets or linen items other than bed sheets, of course? You know, you're frightened to turn over in linen bed sheets, wouldn't you? Great big crease marks all over them. Terrible, dear. What well, ghastly day it is outside today. Raining, and what a massive te I've got itchy nose. What a massive temperature drop it is uh, to what it was yesterday, don't you think? We must be down about 10 or 15 degrees. Fahrenheit, of course. We don't do centigrade, not on this programme, darling. This is the United Kingdom, not part of Europe, thank you. Not part of Europe, this is the United... Itchy nose! That I know what that is. I pulled a hair out earlier. Oh, you've got to leave them in place, haven't you? Hmm. So there we are, a lot of rain today. After I finished chatting away to you last night, um, I watched uh, a programme on the telly. Now, I didn't see the first series of it. Perhaps you did. Ambulance. Anyone see that? On BBC One, colour. Very, very good indeed, I must say. I actually watched it on the iPlayer um, because I hadn't recorded it. And I, I think, I don't know what, I turned the telly on... And uh, I think they were running a trailer for it. I thought, oh, that looks good. And went, went to see when it was on. And it had just been on, I think, last night or perhaps the night before. I can't remember now. Um, uh, so I watched that last night. It's really good. It's about the ambulance service in the uh, West Midlands, Birmingham and the Black Country, they call it. I don't know why they call that the Black Country. Why do they call it the Black Country? Is it, oh, is that um, all smoke and all that? Um, industrial. Perhaps that's why they call it the black country. I'm not quite sure why that is. Um, but it really is very good indeed. And it says, I think at night time they had like something like 52 ambulances and they were all out. And as soon as a pub closes, everyone starts ringing for ambulances. Fights and drunk people falling over. You see, now I think people should pay for that. If you're drunk and you fall over, causing an ambulance to be called out because it's your fault. I, th I think you should be charged for that. What do you reckon? Or do you think it should be free for everyone? I mean, of course, you know, there is the argument as, uh, then to say, well, where do you stop at that, you know? Do you, do, you, do you charge fat people, you know, for having heart attacks because they could have prevented it by not eating? Do you charge smokers for lung cancer operations? You know, I mean, where do you draw the line? There, there is a point there. So I do highly recommend that ambulance, which is on um, every... What day is it on? I think every... Wed... Well, I don't know. It's, it's on one day a week on BBC One Colour at nine o'clock. And also available on the BBC iPlayer. Oh, talking to the iPlayer, something I haven't had before. So I've... I've... I've got it on my telly. Now, I don't have a smart telly. Uh, I've got a like a, 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 a hard disk recorder, and that's got like free sats and some other little things on it, including the iPlayer. And for the first time today, I put switched on the iPlayer, and it wanted me to sign in. Well, I haven't done this before, and it had a code at the bottom of the television, and I had to go on my... I just used my iPhone, actually. I just typed in the uh, website address... Um, it asked for my name and my address, whether I was male or female, um, my date of birth. And then it says put the code in now and you put the code in and suddenly the television bursts into life and the iPlayer appears. That's the first time I've had to do that. Anyone else had to do that? I think that might be something to do with licences. So you've got people without licences were able to use it and I think they're trying to put a stop to that. So that wasn't a problem, but I wonder if you'd come across that at all. Anyway, so uh, that was last night. Went to bed, got up this morning. I had an appointment at 10 past 10 at the doctor's. That was OK. Went up to the swimming pool. When I walked in the swimming pool, the, the girl, she's quite new. She's not been there long, was on the desk. She said, oh, hello, I need to take your photograph today. I said, oh, not interested in buying one then? She said, what do you mean? I said, oh, it doesn't matter, you know. <laughs> so I said, what's this for then? She said, you're going to be member of the month. Oh, yes. Thank you very much. Oh, yes. Chris Reardon, 
Swimming Pool Member of the Month at the Hilton Hotel in Bracknell. Thank you very much. Member of the Month. Anything? So now, you know, for September, although I'm not there next week, of course, but for September, I'll be able to swan in. Hello, everyone. Chris Reardon, Member of the Month. Anything I can do for you, just let me know and I'll pass it on to the relevant authorities. Very, very important, you see. Member of the Month. Yes, I will try and get a photograph of my photo, which is apparently going to be displayed, displayed in the um, in Living Well Hilton foyer. Member of the Month. Oh, yes. Do you know what I think? I think what it is, they realise now that I am a very big star on internet television. I think that's what's happened. And they're try perhaps I should ask for some sort of payment. You know. Payment for using my face. What do you, do you think I should do something? Member of the month. Oh, yes. So I'm going to be member of the month next week. So I'm very, very excited about that. Quite quiet in the swimming pool today. That was quite pleasant as well. Um... And uh, really, that's all I've done since I spoke to you yesterday. I've just had my lunch, which was the same as I had last night. When I do, when I do my, my cook from scratch meals, I do about three or four of them. So then I put them in the fridge or the freezer and, and I keep having them. Oh, blimey, there's a lot of you there this afternoon, isn't there? Hello, everyone. Let's say hello to everyone who sent messages um, uh, this morning. Adam the Plumber's there. Hello, Adam the Plumber. Good luck we all weigh in today. I hope you're more successful than mine, dear. Two and a half pounds on this week. Adam, I did something last night. No, not that. That's been about two years now, to be honest. Um, I did something last night that you have told me not to do because I was a little a bit suspicious of the scows at Slimming World this week. I've been a little bit suspicious. I really have. Um, and I have a couple of times weighed myself on my own scows after I've weighed the Slimming World ones, and they've, they've been identical, exactly the same. So today I stood on my scales, and they were they were a bit lower by about four pounds than the Slimming World ones were. Last night, rather. Last night. So I'm wondering if there was a little disparity in the Slimming World scales yesterday. But we'll soon find out. I'm sure they'll sort it out for the next weighing, which I've got in two weeks' time. Good luck with yours today. Hello, lovely Diane. Always there, Diane, aren't you, lovey? Always there, Diane Jab. Jeb, good afternoon to you. Tim says, hello, everyone. He's putting bits to his, he's got a new Facebook group. Tim does Facebook groups generally about karaoke and other entertainment things. And you can find a link uh, directly on my Facebook wall. If you're watching this show on YouTube, join me on Facebook as well. That's where you can find the show live at various times. It's not scheduled, you know, it is as and when. And you need to click the follow button so you get a... Uh, a notification, OK? Join me on facebook.com forward slash Chris Reardon UK. And uh, once again, as always, thank you those of you that are sharing this little old programme on your walls in the desperation to grab every viewer that we can possibly get. The, the ITV is in danger of closing down now that I've started doing these shows. Did you know that? Oh, yes, dear. They've been on the phone. Hello. Hello, Mr ITV. Yeah, I, no, I can't go off the air. Whoa, then sack them, dear. Get someone better. You don't really think people enjoy loose women, do you? When they've got someone as good looking and as intelligent as me on the on the programme. Um, no, I'm not going. No, I, I don't no, I don't want to be on loose women. Do I look like a woman? Oh say man. Loose women, oh what a, oh, how awful that programme. Ghastly. Ghastly. And that what Jordan, isn't it? You know, fake Jordans on there as well. Oh, dreadful people. Um, Adam says, oh, he's got, he's got a ticky tummy. Oh, I'm sorry you're not well today, Adam. Get well soon. My mate's not well. And I knew, actually, yesterday when we went to uh, went to London, to the hospital in London, he drove, he was driving and he was coughing his guts out. I thought, oh, God, I hope I'm not going to get this. You know, <laughs> and you could hear bits coming up. Oh, bleh, bleh, bleh. Oh, no. And um, last night, he was supposed to come over last night and watch Holby City with me. That's a thing now, you see. He comes over Tuesday nights and we watch Holby City. And then once he's watched that, I kind of hope that he's going to go so I can come up and talk to you. But he hangs around sometimes. Like a bad smell. You know, and you're trying to, oh, I'm, oh, I'm really tired now. At which point he says, oh, you, oh do you want to do a show? No, 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 I'm really tired, you know, and, and you know. And um, he said, oh, well, I'll just watch one more programme. Well, that's another hour. Time I come and talk to you, it's like 12 o'clock at night. You want to go to bed, don't you? Blooming cheek. 
I mean, I don't mind him coming over. He can say as long as he wants, uh, uh, even 15 minutes. I don't mind. 20 sometimes. Anything longer than that, quite frankly, it's taken the mick. I really think so. Uh, Ashley, greetings to uh, Potato Man Ashley, who says, Afternoon, hope you're okay. Sorry I didn't see you Friday. I was very, very disappointed. Very, very disappointed you weren't there Friday night, Ashley. I was so busy, but we'll try and come and see you this weekend. Thank you, Ashley. I do hope so. I do like our very a little chat sometimes that we have. Ashley comes to the front of the stage at Central Station. We have a little bit of a little, little chat, you know, about interesting things. Don't we, Ashley? We always do. And he pops up onto the stage to give me a little hug, which is nice. He helps me out to the car with my bits and pieces. Anyone would think that you fancied me, Ashley. I'm old enough to be your blooming father, dear. Honestly, find someone your own age. What's wrong with these people? Oh, he's been off work for a couple of days with a damaged neck. How did you do? How did you damage that? Oh, my God. Have you turned into like, what was that? The exorcist. You know, when a head goes around a word. Hey, your mother. Th you know, I can't say that. can't do that on the show. But you know that one. Have you seen the exorcist when the head swings around? <laughs> I love it. I'm laughing. I'm not horrified at all. I do like a good horror film, don't you? My favourite was the very first Friday the 13th. <laughs> Friday the 13th, the very first one, which was, I don't know, 1982, something like that. I went with my, my, my friend Philip. We went to see this. And, oh my God, I was jumping in my seat. It was fantastic. Friday the 13th. I remember this particular scene where this bloke was in the kitchen and he's looking out and suddenly this dead body flies through the window. We love it, dear. We love it. <laughs> and I quite like the old Hammer House of Horrors. Uh, in particular, Dr. I don't know if it was a Hammer House one, but uh, Dr. Fibes and Dr. Fibes Rises Again. Have you seen that one? And he's, he's in this great big old building and he's playing this massive organ. And I think his wife is dead. But he keeps her anyway. And later on, I think they, they disappear at the end of the film. They disappear on a boat in a, on an underground river. Oh, it's great. Doctor is really old. Dr. Fibes and Dr. Fibes rises again. I think I got that on DVD somewhere. DVD, yes. Um, oh, Ashley says, I've got an irritated nerve. Well, I'm sorry I'm irritating you. I didn't know I made you nervous, though. Just irritated. Thank you. Tim says, today's show at reasonable time as well. On my lunch break, we'll laugh of it. Well, I'll keep talking. Let me know when you've finished lunch and I'll just go. There's no point in being here unless you're there, Tim. OK. Current temperatures in Kingston is where it's 55 degrees. Thank you very much. What is that in brackets you've got there, Tim? 13C. What is that, dear? What, what is that? I don't understand what that is. 13 is. It's 55 degrees in Kingston upon Thames. That's a nice place. Oh, they've got a lovely Bentles there. And on a Saturday, halfway up, there's a bloke playing a grand piano. I kid you not. You know, I said, can I have a go, please? And he slammed the lid down and said, no, how rude. Nice place, Bentles. And they've got a Disney shop in there. What else have they got in there? They had a HMV. I don't know if that's still there now. But yeah, that's very good. The Bentles Centre in uh, Kingston. Now, we used to go to that. I used to go to that as a, as a very young child. Mum and Dad, we lived in Roehampton, which is just down the road from uh, Kingston. And we did our shopping in Kingston. And every Saturday morning, without fail, we'd all get in the car, go to Kingston. Uh, first of all, Mum and Dad would go around the market getting the fruit and the veg. Um, we would go to Sainsbury's, which is actually quite a small Sainsbury's, which is kind of... It's in like it's, it's kind of out back and out the way, isn't it? That Sainsbury's. It's only a small one. That's where we used to do our main shopping. Uh, we might go to Boots the Chemist. We might go to Woolworths, which has gone now, of course. Uh, and then at the end, we'd go to Bentles. And there would be this very dark, dreary, large kind of cafe type place at the on the on the ground floor in Bentles. Um, this is this is before because because it was all gutted. It was knocked down and they built it, rebuilt it, didn't they? Into what it is today. But in those days, it was just like a a large department store on its own. And um, we'd go in there, and I'd always have a sausage on a stick. I'd <laughs> honest, I'd have a cup of tea and a sausage on a stick every time. Mum said, "Would you like a sausage on a stick?" Yes, please, Mum. And we'd sit there, and I'd have my sausage on the stick. Oh, it was wonderful. 
Wonderful. Is it funny how these memories come flooding back to you? For some reason today, when I was walking back from the swimming pool, um, I, I was thinking about Christmas, Christmases, uh, Christmases past at mum and dad's house, which and they were very, very Christmassy, really Christmassy. You know, everything was Christmassy in there. Now, generally, I go to my sister's house at Christmas uh, now. Um, and she's got the tree and the children come around. It's not very Christmassy. They have normal television on. You know, on Christmas Day, they're sitting there watching... Um, what's that car thing with that loud mouth bloke? Oh, gosh. Where they, where they test out cars and... Sp Top Gear. They watch old episodes of Top Gear and... And, and stuff like that. And I remember last year, I think they had Frozen on, didn't they? Frozen, the big film, Christmas Day. We have him for... Oh, no, we're not watching that, she says. Oh. And they had some crap on. It was like that programme where they have containers and you buy a container. You don't know what's in it. And then they open the door. All oh, right, you got this from America. And I thought, well, what is Christmas about this? It was, um, it's not very Christmassy at my sister's house at Christmas. She got the tree. She's got the tree, the people come around, we've got the presents, we've got the Christmas dinner. But this it's missing because it's it's not mum's probably. Not mum's. She does it wonderful. Don't get me wrong. This is not a cuss. This is not a cuss. Don't get me wrong. But it's it's not it's not mum's Christmas, you know, what I'm used to. And I was walking back from the swimming pool today, remembering all these things. You know, the Christmas tree in the corner, putting the um putting the decorations up and uh, uh, assisting wrapping presents. Then mum would make sure that she would go out and buy all our aunts and uncles presents and we'd have to write little cards out and things like that. And, and then Christmas Day, it was very, very Christmassy. Everything was Christmas. You know, you woke up and the whole house was full of the smell of cooking Christmas food because mum had been up from like six, seven in the morning and the thing had been on all night, slow cooking in the oven. And we got to church in the morning. Um... Then we'd come home and have, a, I think we'd have a little something to eat. We'd have a, we'd have a Christmas breakfast, you know, which would be a, a, a fry up, you know, eggs and sausages and all that. Uh, we'd have, we would have opened some toys in the morning, the Christmas dinner, the big, the Queen on the telly. I see they don't, I don't think they even like watching the Queen. I have to like force it on, watch it on my iPhone or something like that. Um, and then the Christmas film. And just everything was Christmas. Everything. Everything there was Christmas. Wonderful. Wonderful times. Wonderful times. Tim says he taped Ambulance, so we'll not doubt watch it back. It's very, very good, Tim. You must watch that Ambulance. Anyone else who hasn't seen it, get it on the iPlayer, and it is on every week, OK? They've only shown one episode so far. I never saw the first... Apparently, there was a first series, which I didn't see. So... Uh, hello to Joey Millen. Greetings, Joey. Christina says, I have a flu few linen skirts, shirts and dresses. Plan to keep them wrinkle free. It's very difficult keeping them wrinkle free, isn't it? Well, you get the slight, you know, the slight thing. When I finish, like, the show today, I shall be hanging this straight up. I might wear this one tonight, actually. And that's the other thing. You can't wear it in a car on the way to work. No, because when you get out of the car, it's all crease up at the back. It's terrible. Oh, excuse me. I hiccup him. It's terrible linen. Really is. Hello to Matt Joplin. Hello, Matt, who says, Afternoon, Chris. A big difference in the weather. I got sunburnt in Bournemouth this weekend. Oh, my God, Matt. You're not taking your clothes off on the beach, are you, dear? Oh, how horrific is that? You want to go to the gym a little bit, love? Then you might be able to take them off. I had a beautiful body between the ages of 30 and 47. Then it started going a bit wrong. 30 to 47. 17 years of body beauty, of body magic was me. People would ogle at me and I would walk down, walk down brazen, brazen boys and girls through Bracknell Town Centre in my tracksuit bottoms and top off. Yes, I wish you could do that, Matt. Just a little bit of effort, love. I mean, you haven't gone past the age yet where you can do something about it, lovey. But I know how it is for you, darling. Oh, it's so difficult for you to get out of that bed, isn't it, in the morning, lovey? Ben Parker says, The Black Country, which we were talking about at the beginning of the show today, gained its name from the mid-19th century due to the smoke. Ah, there we go. I thought so. Uh, from the many thousands of iron-working founders and forges, plus also the working of the shallow and 30-foot thick coal seams. Oh, God. Can you imagine being a miner, Ben? No, thank you. Down that old black hole. Oh, God. I'd just be permanently worried that the whole thing was going to go on caving down. Do you remember the miners in... Um 
Was it Colombia when it collapsed in Colombia and they, they got them out? Or was it Peru, somewhere like that? And they got them out by building these cylindrical things and they had to go in there while they were pulled out. Oh, that was awful, that was. I think that was turned into a film. I'm sure it's been on. I did want to go and see that. Anyone know what the film was called? Perhaps I can purchase that on DVD. No streaming services here, dear. No. Um, let's have a look. Did you see the one? Ah, oh, Ashley says, uh, ambulance. Did you see the one where the old bloke tried killing himself and putting himself in a pond? No, I haven't seen that one. Was that good? I haven't seen that one. No. Christina says, 70 degrees. Christina, she's at it as well. 19C. What is that? Is that cubic centimetres or something? 19C, ah, or 70 Fahrenheit. I understand that. Fahrenheit, dear. We're not using centigrade or millipedes or anything like that on this programme. Thank you. Inches, Fahrenheit and miles. All right? Drizzling as well. We've got, uh, we have got proper rain here. It was drizzling in the morning. Uh, Ashley, ah, uh, the woman who gave birth at home. Oh, yeah, I saw that. Oh, she wasn't in a comfortable position with, ah, ah, push now, ah, ah. Oh, just imagine what it is having a baby. Oh, we can't be having any of that. The sooner all babies are created in test tubes, the better it will be for all women all over the world. And I'm all for that. All for making people's lives as easy as possible. Mm. Good morning to uh, Nathan. Afternoon, rather. Nathan, Mayor, Jeb. Greetings, Nathan. Mark Kempner is there again. Oh, you're there all the time now, aren't you, Mark? Hope you're well, Mark. What's happening in Asia? Not looking good. Don't know. Is something happening in Asia, then? What's happening there? You're always the bearer of bad news, aren't you, Mark? Can we have something happy? We'll leave the bad news stories to BBC Television. Still waiting for a call for them to offer me a chat show. It might come. Tim's got the TV player on his tablet with all the channels plus free sat. Yes. Yeah, you can do that. I've got a tablet. This is my tablet. Which was given to me, actually, by... um. Uh, by Sharon, her name's Sharon. Uh, she was a black cap customer and she didn't want it anymore. It's very slow. So if I'm like, you, you can't really do, if I was to try and do a video with this, I'd be like moving like that. You know, it's a bit like that. But it does the job. Um, I never, I thought I'd never find a use for this until I discovered that and I can now do my shows anywhere on the mobile phone. That's with the opening and closing videos and everything now. The only thing is I can't use it for the messages while I'm doing the show. So I can use this to read the messages. So I'm so glad that I found a use for that at last, that one there. Um, <laughs> ben says, are they going to display your member in the foyer? <laughs> Darling, there is no wall big enough. Thank you very much. Christina, can we get free passes for swimming since you're member of the month? I'll have a word with the relevant authorities and I'll try and arrange that for you, Christina. I will try and arrange that. I hope you're not going to take up too much of that swimming pool. We can't bear people that insist on going up and down in the middle lane all the time. Oh, that does get on my nerves. Hello to Simon Gilman. Greetings, Simon. How do I get into Slimming World? Is it free or do you have to pay? Is it easy to follow? Uh, yes, you do have to pay. Now, often, one of the magazines, generally one of the ladies' magazines, Bella, OK, something like that, will have a free voucher. If not... I think the first week is about 15 quid, OK? And then after that, it's just under £5 a week. That's all it is, £5 a week. I have found it easy. I have found it very easy. I've lost 19, 18, 17. I've lost £17 so far. So that's 14, 56, 17. One stone, £3 so far. That's in about 12 weeks, OK? I've found it very easy. Simon, so, mean, if you just type in Slimming World... And the area that you're in, OK, into the Facebook, you'll probably find a Facebook group there or type it into Google and you, you'll find you're surrounded by them. And then just pick, pick the day and the time that suits you and go at the same time. It's it, honestly, it's worth doing. OK, it really is worth doing. Um, Simon sprained his elbow by flicking a towel at a moth in my bedroom. Oh, and annoying. So, such a simple thing to do. Moths, great big things, aren't they? Oh, they flutter around and land on your head. Not nice. Uh, yes, oh, I'm glad to see Alan's at the quiz tonight. Yeah, we got quiz tonight, boys and girls. Are you in North London tonight? Because it's the quiz of the week. Join me tonight at 8.30 each and every Wednesday, but not next week. Not next week. 
Not next week because I'm away, okay? So tonight, join me for the quiz at the King's Head Theatre Pub. 115 Upper Street, Islington, London, N1, 1QN, for those of you with satellite navigation. Okay, 8.30 is start time. We got a £30 bar tab. £30 bar tab is the top prize. Second prize is a bottle of wine. People at the bottom get a bag of crisps. Often you say, oh, you've won a bag of crisps. What would you like? And it might be four of them. Oh, I'll have cheese and onion. I'll have some... No, one bag of crisps between you all, dear. Some people are so greedy. Greedy, dear. Shocking. Glad to see you'll be there, Alan, tonight. Uh, I hope you'll find a little team to join or you're going to be on your own. You should bring someone with you, Alan. You might win. You might win. Ashley's going to make an effort this weekend. Oh, he's going to Tenerife. Oh, you'll be able to see my very good friend, Keith George. He uh, does um, the Boy George Experience uh, over there and himself as Keith George. Look in the hotels around Tenerife and you should see him on somewhere. I highly recommend you see that very professional and entertaining entertainer, Keith George, OK? All right. Um Dines, I think Dr. Fibes with Vincent Price. Correct, it was. It was. My Hammer House of Horror was Christopher Lee. Oh, yeah. Christopher Lee. Lovely. Lovely. Christopher Lee. But you're quite right. Vincent Price was the one playing the organ in Dr. Fibes. And, of course, uh, Dr. Fibes rises again. Uh, Ashley said, oh, uh, it, it's his nerve that's irritated in his neck, not me. I'm trying not to irritate you, my darling. I will do my best not to irritate you. It's going to bring a spare... Please bring a spare banana on Friday. Because Chris, DJ Chris, nicked my banana last week, didn't he? You know, and I had to have my pills without having anything to eat. Anything could have happened, dear. I don't know what happens. Take these with something to eat. God. Hello to Craig Hart, who joins us this afternoon. Uh, Ray Reynolds is with us. Better late than never, Ray. Ray's coming along to the quiz tonight. I know that. Tim says... Ken and Amber from Love Island on Facebook Live at the moment, watching that with sound down. Oh, well, what have they got to say? Oh, we really love each other. Oh, oh, how lovely. Oh, you know I'm not a fan of reality television. Love Island's one of the worst of them, dear. But I think the worst one I've ever seen is a recent thing called Make or Break, which I've mentioned on this programme. And the format of this show is, I think it's four couples go into a house and then spend time trying to split each other up. And that my friends, is what the television executives now think you want as entertainment. Shocking. Absolutely shocking. And I don't work it. I don't work it at all. Uh, Christina, several mags of a free voucher for Slimming World this week. Yeah, I thought so. Do you know which ones, I wonder, Christina? Which is the magazines that have got the um, Slimming World um, uh, free membership? I mean, it's, I think it's only a tenner anyway. But uh, if you can save a couple of quid here, there and everywhere, then then that's all the better, isn't it? Now, talking to Christina, you remember she's been telling me that her her boiler in her house hasn't been working for ages and ages. Well, the plumber apparently came today four hours early. Oh, that's great, isn't it? What if you hadn't have been there? So they made an appointment for what, 12 o'clock and they got there at eight in the morning. How annoying is that? Useless. I now have plumbing in my boiler is working after three parts were replaced. Yippee, my three weeks of lukewarm water showers are over. Well done, my darling. At last. At last. And she also sends over uh, this because uh, she is from Texas, where, of course, they've got the terrible, terrible flooding at the moment. Awful. Have you seen it on the telly? You can't imagine it, really, can you? No, I sit there, sick of being in this sort of, you know, nice, warm, dry house. And we sit there watching these things on the telly, whether it's flooding or people starving or people dying from Ebola or people uh, trying to avoid nuclear missiles being chucked over the place. And we sit here watching it. Aren't we lucky? How lucky are we? We have the occasional terrorist incident in London, but apart from that, Manchester as well, of course. But, you know, apart from that, how lucky are we? We don't really have earthquakes or things like that, do we? But um, in a uh, Texas newspaper this morning, it says, uh, Kirk Norquist posted a photo with Facebook with this caption, Drunks with guns. You loot, we shoot. And they're threatening there to um, shoot any looters that are trying to take advantage of the disaster there. Because people are dreadful. 
They are dreadful. You know that Grenfield... Gren... Gren... Oh, God. Gren, I think it's Grenfield House. You know the big fire in West London there, right? When they were giving out the food and that, it was in the papers. People were going to the food place and pretending that they lived there so that they could get free food. Shocking. Shocking what people do anyway. They're threatening to shoot looters in... Um, in uh, in in Texas, and uh, I, I'm with them. I'm afraid there's too much of this pussy footing around. Oh, oh yeah. let's talk to them and see what's wrong. No, shoot them. No, like, you know it, it makes me die. It really does when people are um, going around beating up old ladies or nicking things from shops. Chop the blooming hands off. Doesn't happen in Saudi Arabia where they chop people's hands off for nicking out shops. Chop the hands off. That's why your bills are so high. Because people are nicking left, right and centre. Oh, dear, dear me. Let's hear. Am I in Saturday night? Yes, I am. I'm there Saturday this week. Worry not. Worry not. Tim says, on your quiz night listing on 7 Live UK, I'll put Islington instead of Islington. Islington will be just as good, actually. They, they all look like they've been in comics, mostly customers. But if you ever come down to the quiz night, it's not serious. You know me. It's very much like this. We have a little bit of a laugh and uh, a little bit of chat with each other. OK, and that's how it is. Got some good stories here uh, from the, some newspapers. I, was go I actually had these for yesterday's show, which we were doing when we were driving along. You know, my mate was driving and I was doing a show. But unfortunately, it didn't quite work out as, as well as I thought it would. I thought being in London, we'd have a constant like four or, or even 3G. We do it on 3G. I thought we'd have at least a 3G signal going through, but it wasn't the case. And, and it kind of cut off a few times. Um, look at this great idea. Planes could be powered by household rubbish under a government scheme. Uh, ministers are offering 22 million quid for research into low carbon waste based fuels for planes and lorries, which they say could be worth 600 million quid to the economy by 2030. What's well, a long way? 2030. So how old will I be then? 2017, 18, 19, 20, that's 13. So that's 13 years at 54, 65, 65 67, 66. Up, um, I'd be at least 101 by then. I do hope I am able to see <coughs> planes flying around, burning up your crap. I wonder how that will work, though. And why if stuff isn't burnt up properly? You know, for example, will you get, oh, a dreadful thought. You know, maybe you're walking along and a plane goes over and, I don't know, a bag of rubbish dro drops out onto your head. Or worse than that, used tooth floss. Oh, I hate Used to floss. <laughs> Put it in the bin. Like the hotel last week, up at the swimming pool, their showers weren't working. Okay? So they let us use the showers in little hotel rooms. And someone had left a piece of used to floss on the sink. Dirty people. The story says, uh, this was in um, Monday's Daily Mail, actually. Uh, the new technology will be able to harness the power of rubbish that currently heads to landfill. They've got to do something about that, haven't they? You can't just keep burying all this stuff, love. Figures show aircraft and lorries powered by waste fuel could use up to 90% less carbon than those with traditional fossil fuels. We're all going to run out of oil one day anyway, aren't we? Especially, who's that bloke on the telly? What's his name? That one with the greasy hair. Jonathan Ross. Jonathan Ross. I mean, he's practically used all, all the oil there is in the world on his head. Greasy. He does look like he needs a blooming good wash, doesn't he? And cut your hair, Jonathan. God's sake, man, what's wrong with you? You're on telly, for Christ's sake. Look at me on a little internet little thing doing this. And I've managed to look all right. Why can't you do the same on your 10 million quid a year? God's sake, man. Tidy yourself up. I've got loads of my gay mates can sort you out. Not like that, you know. With your nice haircut and nice clothes as well. You look like a tramp, dear. A tramp. Tidy yourself up. Any advice I can give, I'll gladly, happily give it. A small fee of only £100,000 per consultation, based on the fact that you get so much money for looking like a tramp. Disgusting, dear. Disgusting. It really is. Uh... <laughs> 
he would find that funny. You know that, don't you? He would find that funny. We know lorries and aeroplanes will rely more on traditional fuels for years to come, so we must promote environmentally friendly alternatives. The new fuels are chemically sim similar to conventional fuels, so aircraft would use them without needing modification. So that would be a good thing, wouldn't it? Wouldn't it be a fantastic thing? I think there's some power stations. Aren't there some power stations um, uh, that, that burn rubbish and that and make uh, electronicity out of that? What is, I'm possibly what you're possibly watching this today through your own rubbish being burned. How exciting is that? I like the sound of that. Yes. Christina says, uh, Bella, there we go. Thank you, Christina. Bella and Woman Magazine have the Slimming World vouchers. OK, so that's what you want. Bella or Woman's Own Magazine. If you're really lucky and are feeling a bit tight, pop down to your local doctor's surgery and you should... You should find a copy in there. But for Christ's sake, rubber gloves. Rubber gloves. Do not touch the newspapers or the magazines in doctor's surgery with your bare hands. You go in there, you sign in on that screen thing, and don't touch the screen over. You place rubber gloves on and you sit there until you go into the, into the surgery, surgery, surgery with your rubber gloves on in case of contamination. Absolutely. Mm. Um... Oh, Christine, I think you tried to send something there and it hasn't come through, darling. So if you want to try and uh, send that one again, OK. We'll open the phone line just in the off chance that someone might want to call in this afternoon. There it is. 020-8144-3477 is my local London number, OK? 020-8144-3477. Or you can call in on our Skype, United Kingdom Talk. All one word, United Kingdom Talk. Or the phone number, 020-8144-3477. Uh, three, four, double, seven. Now, we were talking about the worrying things that are going on at the moment in North Korea. They've shoved a, another missile out which flew across Japan, fighting the life out of the Japanese, didn't it? I should think it blooming well would do. Blooming great big missile flying over you like that. Well, now there's this story today, uh, this morning. Now, when was this updated? Uh, just before midday today in the Daily Mirror. But I've had a look on the BBC website and I kind of rely on on um, the BBC uh, website for proper news, if you see what I mean. And I can't find it in the mail or anywhere else. It's only on the Daily Mirror's um, website. And it says, America has issued a dramatic warning to North Korea after a US Navy warship shot down a ballistic missile at sea. The test, scheduled well in advance, was done from the USS John Paul Jones uh, ship and comes a day after North Korea fired a ballistic missile over Japan. Uh, the ship uses standard missiles, guided missiles, and intercepted a medium-range ballistic missile target that was launched from the Pacific Missile Range facility on Hawaii. Uh, so is that... I can't work out that story. Comes after North Korea. Oh, it was it from from North Korea? Was it from North Korea that they shot down? Maybe oh, maybe it wasn't. Maybe it was just a test. But um, <clears throat> it is getting a little bit worrying over there, don't you think? And I think it's time time to order your bunker, boys and girls. You need to order your bunker. I've started digging, dear. I've actually dug up a rose bed in my garden to start building a bunker in the next couple of days. No room for you, I'm afraid. No room. No. There's no room at the inn. There's just me. There was me and the cat, but not, not anymore. Greetings to Adam. Good evening, Adam, who joins us this afternoon. Who's coming to the quiz? No sport questions, please. Don't you worry about that. Well, there won't be a sports round, Adam. Definitely no sports round. And now, now and then there might be a football question. There might be a little cricket, cricket question. Might be a swimming question. But we, I, I don't do sports rounds. They're not popular, believe it or not. Last sports round, it would have been a couple of years ago, I last done a sports round. They are not popular and they're not high scoring because people are, oh, great, a sports round. And they get in there and they might know everything about football. Or they might know everything about tennis. Or they might know everything about horse racing. But then they realise that the sports questions are all different. So there might be a couple on football and then they get a low score. So sports rounds are not popular and I don't do them. I don't do them. OK. Um, who's your dad then, Adam? Who's, who's your dad who's going to be there? 
Is your dad coming as well? Huh? Do you think you'll beat him? Are you going to be up against your dad? Or you're going to join your dad's team, are you? Very sensible. Very, very sensible. Okay, Doug. Uh, oh, it's Alan, of course. Alan. Alan. Stupid me. I remember now, because it's him that told me to add you, wasn't it? Yeah. Bring your dad as well. And uh, good luck with that today. Now, I'm just trying to remember what the music round is today, and I can't. Can't remember what the music round is today. I think it might be. No, I can't remember. It, it's all on the on the laptop and that's all downstairs. So I can't really bring that up, I'm afraid. OK, 0208 144 Now, um, on my on my continuing quest to stop you flying unnecessarily to other countries when you can have a perfectly good holiday here in the UK. I've got a couple of stories to tell you before we disappear this afternoon. First of all, while I was in the uh, swimming pool reception area, receiving, receiving my member of the month announcement today, lady was in there and I hadn't seen them for a couple of weeks. I said, oh, how are you today? Uh, I was over and no husband there. I said, I haven't seen you for a while. They've been on a cruise. And I have to say, it was a three-week cruise. The bloke's only put on two pounds in weight. Has he managed that? God, has anyone ever been on a... Have you ever been on a cruise? All you do is eat. You eat and you eat and you eat. He says, and the, and the bloke says, you can have a meal at every meal time if you want, but you need to be sensible about it. You don't have to have a full English breakfast every day. He said there were people going down there. You go for dinner at, seven, I don't know, seven or eight o'clock. And then at midnight, there's another feast. And they go down and have a complete other meal again. He only put on only two pounds in three weeks. That's not bad going. And I said, did you fly there? And they said, no, no, we got the, the you, you drive. You see, you can drive to Southampton to the dock there. And you literally leave your car in the car park and walk onto the boat. It's as easy as that. So much better than flying. And uh, the lady was saying, she says, oh, I'm really funny with flying since the last experience. It was not good. I said, well, what happened? She said, we were surrounded by thunderstorms. <clears throat> and I think it was an easy jet plane. And they were trying to land. Now, where did she say she was trying to land? Uh, Croatia. They were trying to land in Croatia. Three times they tried to land. And they were getting really worried because they were running out of fuel. And this, this thunderstorm was around and they, they just couldn't land the plane. So that got diverted, I think she said, to somewhere else. Where they refueled, refueled. And then they came back again to try and land again to Croatia. Again, three times they tried to land. They couldn't land. And they were starting to run out of fuel, apparently. Uh, she was saying that the, the airline staff were actually as white as a sheet. They were all really worried that they weren't going to make it. Then they went to another airport. And I think they, they couldn't land there either. Because once again, the, the, the thunderstorms and that. So they went somewhere else. She said it, it was this plane was going up and down. She said, we really thought we were going to die. And then um, somewhere else it landed. And of course, they're very, very funny about you getting off the plane, aren't they? If it if it, if it's if it's um, stuck somewhere, you know, whether or not, you know, you, you can't leave. Or you, oh, I want to get off the plane. No, you can't get off. I don't know why that is. They're very, very funny about you getting off a plane. And anyway, this woman was demanding to be let off the plane. So she had a police escort come and they took her off the plane on into the airport and across the easy jet thing. Anyone else who wants to leave the plane, once you leave the plane, this this was across the speaker apparently on the plane, easy jet. Once you leave the plane, you're nothing to do with us after that. And that awful. It's awful. And sometimes you're sitting there on the plane and they can't turn the air conditioning on for some reason. And you're getting hotter. And I've been in that situation. And it gets so hot on a plane. Why would anyone want to fly? So that was her experience. Here's another one here. Ryanair this time. Oh, yeah. Ryanair. I flew with them once. Never again. Miserable lot of people they are. A mother and daughter in uh, this afternoon's Daily Mail. Mother and daughter had to sleep on the floor of Alicante Airport when Ryanair rejected their hand luggage for their return flight for being half an inch too big. It's disgusting, that, isn't it? 
Isn't it disgusting? How has air travel come to this? It was so good in the 80s and 90s, wasn't it? It's so awful now, travelling by air. You're frightened that, you know, you've got, you're an extra ounce over in your bag, so you're going to be charged 200 quid for the bag. You've forgotten to print your boarding pass off, so that's another £100. It's disgusting. Even British Airways, they seem to be falling apart, British Airways. You don't get a meal on the economy flight anymore. You can buy a Marks and Spencer sandwich and you get a fun-sized Mar bar, Mars bar. It's awful flying now. I don't know why anyone... And they're going to cut their own throats at some people because I can't be the only one that detests flying now. There must be more people like me that don't want to fly anymore because we're fed up being treated like, like idiots. Uh, this woman, 51, and her daughter had to spend 14 hours in the Spanish airport after they were told the bags they had taken with them on holiday were too big to go back. As they got to the departure gate... The lady who had a bigger bag than her daughter was waved through with no problem. But the little girl was stopped, had her bag measured and was told the case was a seventh of an inch, two centimetres too deep. And they'd have to pay 50 quid to put it in the hold. Ryanair, listen to the name. Ryanair, don't fly with them. The lady couldn't afford the £50 fee before the day, the next day, so started putting her daughter's items into her own case instead. Another member of the staff then stepped in and said her bag was too big as well. So for the next 14 hours, she slept on the floor at Alicante Airport in holiday clothes. The next morning, and with money in her account, Tanya, the woman Tanya had to fork out 385 quid on flights with Jet2.com, which had no problem with their baggage. The lady said it was horrendous. We tried to be positive, but there was no spare seats at the airport. And the floor we slept on was rock hard and freezing cold. I should think it was. Lucky they let you stay there, dear. And it's just awful, isn't it? A Ryanair spokesman said all customers agreed to adhere to... Oh, a load of old crap they talk. But it's OK, mate. I won't ever get on your planes. You wouldn't get me dragged onto one of your planes. You're disgusting the way you treat people. Absolutely disgusting. And quite frankly, your customer services stinks. It's all very well having that, that idiot, Michael O'Leary, with his T-shirts, don't even, can't even dress right for an interview. What sort of thing are you running there? Just because you're making money doesn't mean you're successful. Success is class on people's happiness, not on money. There we are. Um... Ah, oh, Nathan Vaporboy Edwards. Greetings. Bloody hell, long time, Chris. Been very busy. Well, you have been. Clearly too busy to come and see me on my little shows. But welcome back. All right. Uh, let's have a look. Let's do today. Oh, Craig is going on a cruise. What cruise are you going on, Craig? Who's the cruise liner? I went um, with... Have I been on two or one, come to think of it? I don't know. I have only been on one. I've only been on one cruise, maybe. And it was a, it was a, just a cheap one, air tours. I've no complaints about it. It was lovely. Lovely air tours. You can go at the, the other end. Is it princess cruises? You can go expensive or you can go cheap on cruises. But I think they're lovely holidays. And it's so wonderful. And you can just drive to the Southampton um, dock. Get out of your car and walk onto the ship. Fantastic, fantastic. Let's do today's birthdays, boys and girls. Uh, four people, I think I know. I know all of this lot. I remember all of this lot. Yeah, wonderful people. Uh, first of all, top of my list is lovely Charlotte Adijayan. Happy birthday, Charlotte. MC Dry Weave. Charlotte was a big time DJ, same as I was a while ago. Charlotte was big time DJ in London and she used to DJ at the Vauxhall Tavern on a Sunday night, and it was called The Institution. And it was huge. It was a huge night. She lives now with her lady in Grand Canaria. Happy birthday, Charlotte. She was one of the very first people to welcome me into the Black Cap. She was a customer in there, and she was there on my very first night in 1987. 
either 87 or 89, I think it was. She was there on my first night and I walked in with my suitcase full of records. I saw I'm very nervous. She said, and her and Joy were sitting there in the corner and she said, don't worry, you'll be all right, you'll be all right. And I was. I was all right and I loved it and I was lucky enough to spend 18 years at that venue. And uh, her and Joy made me feel so welcome. So happy birthday to you, Charlotte. You're always in my mind, you are. Happy birthday, Charlotte. Paul Bowhill. Today is 73 years old today. Paul, you will know on the telly. He uh, is on the programme. Can't pay your take it away. He's the really nice older um, uh, High Court Enforcement Officer. The one with the grey hair and the glasses. There's actually two that are sort of of an age. Um, there's him and another one. And they're both nice. He's usually with the other bloke. Uh, who probably looks a little bit like younger than Paul. So happy birthday, Paul, and we love you on Can't Pay Well Take It Away. He's I find him very, very fair, the way he talks to people. Some of the younger ones on there, there's a particular one, there's a great big bloke with glasses, and he's very bullshit. You know, I wouldn't want him in my house. But um, Paul is very nice, and he comes across as a nice bloke. So happy birthday to Paul Bowhill from Can't Pay Well Take It Away, 73 years old today. Uh, Bradley Watts. Hello, Bradley. Always comes along to the karaoke and the quiz nights, usually with a chap called Ricky. Happy birthday to you, Bradley. Come and receive your birthday kiss from me tonight. Ah, all right. <laughs> happy birthday, Brad. And happy birthday today to Paul Barton, who I haven't seen for some years. He used to come into Reflex and I think Harpo's uh, when it was in Elves Court. So happy birthday to you all. Let's sing the song, gang. Oh, bit of a delay there, wasn't it? Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday Charlotte, Paul, Bradley and Paul, happy birthday to you. Enjoy your birthday on this wonderful wet Wednesday. So don't forget, once again, gang, it's uh, our quiz night tonight if you're in Islington this evening. And I'm not there next week, so try and pop down tonight. It's quiz night tonight at the King's Head Theatre Pub. 115 Upper Street, Islington, London, N1, 1QN. Starts at 8.30. Good idea to get there about half hour earlier to make sure you get a table. Or even better, ring ahead. I don't have the number with me, I'm afraid. Ring ahead and book your table in advance uh, you know, I don't know, for something like eight o'clock and then, then they will save you a table and you'll be OK. All right. Thanks very much for watching and listening to the show today. I'll see you again very soon. Have a nice Wednesday. Bye bye now.